Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Over the NHL's 103 year history, there have been many instances of players suiting up either with or against one or more of their brothers. Whether it's Maurice and Henri Richard during the 50s, the Stastny brothers during the 80s, or even the Sedin twins during the 2000s, there have been a number of siblings that have used their unique chemistry and brotherly love to go down in history as some of the greatest players to have ever played the game. One family unit that has been active in the league for quite a while now, and is still going strong to this very day, is the Stahl family. Not only have older brother Eric, middle brother Mark, and younger brother Jordan been mainstays on an NHL roster for well over a decade now, all three of them have produced impressive careers in the best league in the world, as each brother has suited up in at least 892 NHL games at the time of this recording. However, a fourth Stahl brother also suited up in the NHL, but his career wasn't quite as long or successful as the others. This is the story of Jared Stahl, the other Stahl brother. In order to tell this tale, allow me to take you back to June 21st, 2003, when Canadian forward Jared Stahl, who was just 13 years old at the time, watched his eldest brother Eric be taken second overall at the 2003 NHL draft by the Carolina Hurricanes. Two years later, on July 30th, 2005, a 15-year-old Jared, who was now playing for the Thunder Bay Kings AAA junior team, would once again be on the draft floor as his second oldest brother Mark was selected 12th overall by the New York Rangers at the 2005 draft. Less than a year after that, on June 24th, 2006, Jared would make his third trip to the event, as his closest brother in age, Jordan, was taken second overall by the Pittsburgh Penguins at the 2006 draft. So in the span of just three years, Jared Stahl had watched each of his older brothers get chosen as one of the top 12 players of their age group in the entire hockey world, with two of them being selected as high as second overall. Jeez, no pressure, Jared. A few months before Jordan's draft selection on May 6, 2006, Jared would hear his name mentioned and his rights assigned to a new team, but in the OHL's 2006 priority selection as he was taken 11th overall by the Sudbury Wolves, thanks to scoring 39 points in 64 games with Thunder Bay's under-16 team the season prior. As the 06-07 season commenced, Jared Stahl would take to the ice with Sudbury and look to make the same impact in the major junior circuit as his three brothers had in the years before him. Though he would struggle during his first year in the O with just three points in 63 games, the Canadian forward would really kick things up a notch during his sophomore season in the league, as he scored 21 goals and 49 points in 60 games, earning a place at the CHL top prospect game in the process. This vast improvement in his production from one year to the next would help Jared earn his turn to be chosen at the NHL draft in 2008, but he was selected much lower than any of his older brothers. Instead of going second or 12th, Jared was taken 49th overall in the second round by the Phoenix Coyotes. This made Jared the first and only Stahl brother to not be selected in the first round of the draft, going 37 picks lower than Mark and 47 picks lower than Eric and Jordan. Sure, he may have been the only Stahl brother taken outside of the first round, but so what, right? There are plenty of second round picks that go on to have long and successful NHL careers. After all, it's not as if he was a long shot picked in the 6th or 7th round, he was selected as the 49th best player of his age group. That's still pretty impressive, you know? With a bit of hard work, some perseverance and a hint of luck, Jared could still go on to produce a great career in the NHL and live up to the lofty expectations that come with being a hockey player in the Stahl family. Would Jared achieve this though? Well... After his selection at the draft, Jared would play another two seasons with Sudbury and continue to put up strong numbers in the OHL, scoring 31 goals and 101 points in 126 games as an overager. Not only that, but he would also get the chance to briefly try his hand at pro hockey too, as he played a pair of five-game stints with the San Antonio Rampage of the AHL, but he would score just a single point in 10 total games before being sent back down to the Wolves both years in order to continue refining his game. 
Then, on March 13th, 2010, it was announced that the Phoenix Coyotes had traded Jared's contract rights to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for a fifth round draft pick. The next day, the Canadian forward signed a three-year entry-level contract with the team, meaning he would get his first real opportunity to crack an NHL roster and have the chance to play alongside one of his brothers, as he joined a Carolina team that was captained by his oldest brother, Eric. However, Jared wouldn't make the jump to the bigs just yet. As the 10-11 season got underway, Jared was unable to earn a place on the Hurricanes roster out of training camp, so he was assigned to the Charlotte Checkers of the AHL instead. After struggling to find his rhythm at the pro level early in the year, the former second round pick would be demoted to the Florida Everblades of the ECHL for much of the season. Once he was playing in North America's third tier pro league, Jared was able to pick his production up a bit and find his game, as he scored 11 points in 33 ECHL games. This improved production would prompt Charlotte to recall Jared to the Checkers roster for the conclusion of the year, where he finished the 10-11 season with just two points in 13 AHL games. Not exactly the season he was hoping for, but Jared was just 20 years old and had just finished his first full season as a pro. He still had plenty of time to keep improving and iron out the creases in his game. Unfortunately though, Jared's sophomore year in the Hurricanes organization didn't go much better either as he scored just 6 points in 37 games with the Checkers during the 11-12 season. In fact, Jared's play would be considered so expendable that the Hurricanes loaned him to the Boston Bruins AHL affiliate in Providence for the remainder of the year, where he scored 2 points in 7 games to conclude the season. Things clearly hadn't gone the way that Jared had wanted over the last few years, and his career was far from keeping pace with his older brothers. As Jared was struggling to produce in the minors, all three of his older siblings were fully established regulars in the NHL, and two of his brothers had even won a Stanley Cup championship. However, Jared would soon get the opportunity to join his brothers on NHL ice. The 12-13 season would see Jared return to Charlotte and begin his third season on the Checkers roster though he would once again produce minimal numbers with just 7 points in 52 AHL games, on April 24th, 2013, the Canadian forward would hear the greatest news of his career. He had been called up to the Carolina Hurricanes roster and would be making his NHL debut the following day. So five years after his draft selection and after three years of toiling away in the minors with mixed results, Jared Stahl would get the opportunity to play in the best league in the world. On April 25th, 2013, Jared Stahl would make his NHL debut as the Carolina Hurricanes hosted the New York Rangers. Not only would Jared be in the starting lineup alongside his brothers Eric and Jordan, who had been acquired by Carolina before the lockout shortened season began, once the final buzzer sounded and the game was over, the visiting team would leave the victors, as New York took a 4-3 overtime win over the Hurricanes. Eric Stahl would be the only brother of the four to register a point in the game, as he recorded the lone assist on a Yuri Tolusti goal that gave Carolina a 3-2 lead early in the third period. Jared's night, however, would be a lot quieter, as he registered one shot on goal, five hits, one block and one takeaway in 12 minutes and 16 seconds of ice time. As the Rangers left town, Jared would be told that he was sticking around with the Hurricanes for what little was left of the 12-13 season. The former second round pick would travel with the team to Pittsburgh on April 27th in order to take on the Penguins in Carolina's final game of the season, but the Canadian forward would once again struggle at the NHL level posting a minus two and two penalty minutes in 14 minutes and 30 seconds of ice time as the Hurricanes took an 8-3 loss to their Metropolitan Division rivals. This late season stint with the Hurricanes would end up being Jared's first and only experience of the bigs, as the Canadian forward would never suit up in the NHL again for the rest of his career. So the youngest stall brother, the one who had watched each of his older siblings get taken high in the first round of the draft, and had seen his three brothers play at least 388 NHL games by the conclusion of the lockout-shortened 12-13 season, would suit up in just two NHL games of his own, going scoreless with two penalty minutes and a minus two in that span. Not exactly what he was hoping for in his career, 
But hey, at least he made it to the NHL. There are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of players that wish they could say the same, you know? Following his brief stint in the bigs, Jared Stahl would return to the Charlotte Checkers and spend the next two seasons of his career solely with the team, scoring 18 points in 113 AHL games, before moving to the South Carolina Stingrays of the ECHL for the 15-16 season. In fact, Jared's fifth year with the Checkers in 1415 would be his final stint in the AHL, meaning that after parts of seven seasons, Jared would finish his time in the A with 17 goals and 36 points in 232 AHL games. So not only had the youngest Stahl brother been unable to become a regular on an NHL roster, he had failed to become a productive player in the minors too. After spending a year in the ECHL with the Stingrays, where he put up 24 points in 64 games, Jared would decide to take his talents overseas to Europe where he signed with the Edinburgh Capitals of the British Elite Ice Hockey League for the 16-17 season. The reduced talent level he would face each game, thanks to playing in one of Europe's lower tier leagues, helped Jared produce his most successful season since turning pro, as he scored 12 goals and 33 points in 44 games, while serving as an alternate captain of the team. Once his year in Scotland had come to an end, Jared was faced with two options. Either continue his pro career across the pond, which would likely see him bounce between several different teams in several European leagues over the next few years, or retire and pursue other opportunities either in the hockey world or elsewhere. After weighing up the possibilities, the responsibilities and the outcomes of either decision, the former second round pick would ultimately choose the latter option, as he announced his retirement from the sport before the 17-18 season at just 28 years old. So a decade after he was taken in the second round of the draft, after parts of seven seasons in the AHL, a year in the ECHL, and a season in Scotland, Jared Stahl was hanging up his skates, having scored 104 points in 375 professional hockey games, with the highlight of his career being a brief two-game stint with the Carolina Hurricanes, in which he took to the ice with his older brothers. Now, I think it's fair to say that Jared kind of became the odd brother out during his playing career, especially when you consider his three siblings had all played at least 639 NHL games at the time of Jared's retirement. I'm sure many fans look back at Jared's career or the numbers he produced and see him as a bust, and in a lot of ways he kind of was. He was a second round draft pick who made it to the NHL for just two games and struggled to be a productive player at the AHL level too. However, in Jared's defence, he was a different type of player than his brothers. He wasn't a high-scoring, highlight reel superstar or a two-way stay-at-home defenceman. He was a depth forward who could kill penalties and was reliable in his own zone. He wasn't a first-line forward or an all-star. He was a top-nine forward at the very best and a bottom-six forward to most, a role that he played pretty well throughout his entire career. And you know what? That's okay. Just because he didn't spend a decade in the NHL doesn't mean he wasn't a successful pro hockey player. I mean, he earned almost half a million dollars during his career. That sounds pretty successful to me, you know? Also, the fact that he was taken 49th overall in the draft when his other brothers were all taken high in the first round could be seen as another knock on Jared's abilities. But you could also argue that the expectations to pan out were a lot lower for him compared to his siblings. If Jared had been taken 2nd or 12th overall, and then had the career that he did, he would be in the conversation for one of the worst first round picks ever. But since he went deep into the second round, there are plenty of players taken around him that are more likely to become misses rather than hits. Obviously, there are plenty of second rounders who go on to have great NHL careers, but the deeper in the draft you go, the less certainty there is that a player is going to make it to the NHL. After calling it a day on his career, Jared Stahl would spend a year away from the sport of hockey during the 17-18 season, before taking his talents behind the bench for the 18-19 season, as he joined the Okanagan Hockey Academy. Having spent the year as an assistant coach of the academy's bantam and prep teams at their Edmonton campus, the former second round pick would pack up his things and return to the ECHL for the 2019-2020 season, this time as an assistant coach of the Orlando Solar Bears. 
Though the Solar Bears posted an under 500 record at last season's pause, I would imagine that Jared will return behind Orlando's bench whenever next season gets started, and he will continue to apply his knowledge of the sport in the pursuit of a long and successful career in coaching. Though he never reached the same heights as his three brothers did, and he was unable to make it to the NHL long term, Jared Stahl was still able to produce a decade-long career as a professional hockey player, thanks to plenty of hard work, perseverance, and him knowing his role on a roster. His numbers may not look all that impressive, especially compared to his siblings, but Jared has taken everything he has learnt during his time as a player, and has started to apply it towards helping other pro players whose skates he once filled. He may not have been the most memorable, the most successful, or even the most talented, but you don't get to suit up in two NHL games and spend 10 seasons as a pro if you're a bad hockey player now, do you? And that's the story of Jared Stahl. What do you guys think about Jared's pro career? Was it disappointing considering the family he came from, or should he not be compared to his older brothers and be looked at as just a singular player? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Chris Gadsby, Connor B, John Plomin, Jordan Whitehead, Martin Tolnus, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.